Okay, this sermon's entitled Selflessness. I'd like to open up with prayer and then with a few verses. All right, dear God, thank you for giving us your word. Thank you for allowing us to see what it says on this very subject. Bless the listeners. I ask all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, Galatians chapter 1 talks about Jesus Christ and how selfless he was. And, when, and, he, and he died for our sins. He, he gave himself for us. And that's what the Bible teaches all the way through about salvation. Is that Jesus Christ gave him his own life for us. He laid down his life for us. And Galatians chapter 1, it talks about this. It says in verse 1, Paul, an apostle, not of men, neither by man, but by Jesus Christ and God the Father, who raised him from the dead. And all the brethren which are with me unto the churches of Galatia, grace be to you, and peace from God the Father, and from our Lord Jesus Christ, who gave himself for our sins, that he might deliver us from this present evil world, according to to the will of God and our Father. Now turn to Galatians chapter 2. Galatians chapter 2. Look at verse 20. I am crucified with Christ, nevertheless I live. Yet not I, but Christ liveth in me, that the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. So that tells you right there how, how selfless Christ was. He gave himself for our sins. Jesus Christ is the Savior of the world. He died, was buried, and rose again, and that's what he did for us. And how do we, re how do we receive eternal life? We just, sim we just simply believe on him. We trust him. We trust in him and what he did. And then, and then we're saved forever. Eternally secure. Our, our fate is sealed unto the day of redemption. And that was all done for us because of God's marvelous and matchless grace. We have verses that, that talk about this all over the place. And I can just preach for hours on this subject. But I'd like to preach right now on the subject of being selfless because of what Christ has done for us. We have to understand what, he, what God has done for us, otherwise this is not going to make any sense. So I've, exp I've made it clear that Christ gave himself for us. And he, he poured out his life, you know, he died, his, he shed all his blood for us. Just gave it, gave it to us. Gave us eternal life by grace. The Bible says, For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God, being justified freely by His grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. Redemption. We're, we're redeemed. The people, Believers in Christ have been saved. They're born again. Born from, born from above is what that actually means. And God did all that for us. Let's go to an, a few more verses to, that, that talk about this. Just how rich you know, and wonderful Christ is you know, to us. But the Bible says in uh, 2 Corinthians chapter number 8. Let's look at one more verse on this. 2 Corinthians chapter 8. It reads, in verse 9, For ye know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, that though he was rich, yet for your sakes he became poor, that ye through his poverty might be rich. So, everything about salvation is what God has done for us. You know, even in John 3, 16, I love, I mean, I love simple verses like this. It's just, you can't get enough of this verse. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. See, it's all about what God did for us. He gave his, he gave his son for us. What a sacrifice. You know, he didn't have to do this. We're, 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 we're you know, rebels and wicked sinners by nature. And yet God, God in his love, you know, sent his son to die for us. So now, where am I getting at with this? I'm getting at we should be selfless because of what Jesus Christ has done for us. See, most Christians are selfish. They don't go soul winning. They don't want to read their Bible. They don't want to do anything spiritual. They don't want to give. And all they want to do is just get, get, get. It's sad. Now, let's turn to one more verse on this. And this verse goes over the fact that Jesus paid it all, and then he's exhorting us to be selfless too. And, like I said, this comes after salvation, and um, not everybody ha is, is going to adhere to this. But that's the point of preaching, is to let people know, you know what the Bible says on this very subject. So turn to 1 John chapter 3. 1 John chapter 3, it says in verse 16, Hereby perceive we the love of God, because he laid down his life for us. There it is again, that same concept. And we ought to lay down our lives for the brethren. So, instead of being selfish... Instead of, you know, just 
spending all your time being self-absorbed and uh, egocentric and you know you know covetous and uh, being greedy and avaricious why don't we spend more time focused on you know number one Jesus Christ you know God and then number two others why don't we put others you know before ourselves you know and that's what the Bible's teaching us is not to be selfish and I'm gonna tell you something about, about a selfish person that number one nobody wants to be around them I'm gonna I'm just gonna lay it out they, they, they exude so many different mannerisms like they have they're very greedy they're very you know cranky they're hard to talk to they're cantankerous they're petulant they're just all up they're very vain and they're very carnal and worldly and it's just it's not fun to be around such people people want to be around the person who's like very you know altruistic very um, elemosinary I guess is the word they want to be around somebody that, that just cares and somebody that's not you know the full of full of full of their own ego and full of pride so selfishness is not is never the way to go selflessness is the way to go turn turn over to uh, Psalm 119 it says in verse 36 it's a very you know germane verse to this sermon incline my heart unto thy testimonies and not to covetousness so the key to this verse now let's don't just don't just gloss over this verse let's look at it again it says incline my heart unto thy testimonies that's God's word and not to covetousness so what that's telling us is that you know you're either gonna read the you're gonna read the Bible or read God's word or you're gonna be focused on something else which is eventually gonna lead to like I said covetousness or you know a sin of some kind now look at verse 37 turn away mine eyes from beholding vanity and quicken me that can quicken thou me in thy way establish thy word unto thy servant who is devoted to thy fear turn away my reproach which I fear for thy judgments are good behold I have longed after thy precepts quicken me in thy righteousness precepts and then of course you know <clears throat> testimonies are all talking about God's word so really the key to this is to stay in the word stay reading stay in the Bible read the Bible all the time and then the things of the world you know won't, won't matter so we, we can't we have a choice here now you know the person who is selfish is going to get ripped off every time they're always going to have problems the person who is selfless will be will be blessed by God they will be re rewarded for this and they'll have a better life because it, it, it gives you an act believe it or not it gives you joy to, to, to help others and to live for you know <clears throat> for a higher purpose than just you know gratifying your own flesh and see that type of mentality it, it's, it never leads to anything good anyway every selfish person out there is not happy you know when, when you start helping others and start giving to others and start putting God first and you know start focusing on spiritual things as it says in Colossians 3 you'll have real joy now let me go over one last verse on that happiness and joy it comes actually comes from being selfless turn back to um, 2nd Chronicles chapter 9 okay verse 7 and I'll close happy are thy men and happy are those thy servants which stand continually before thee and hear thy wisdom so we need to stop being selfish we need to start being selfless and we need to do what the Bible says and get into God's Word and we'll be happy because we're gonna because we're gonna continue to learn and because we're actually engaging in something that matters being selfish is usually half the time doesn't matter you know a person wants to watch a TV show because they're selfish and I'm gonna tell you now the TV show doesn't matter okay so being selfish, like I said, it stinks, and I'm, I'm just preaching, you know, that we we, do, we need to not be that way because nobody nobody ever gets anything out of it, and if you do, it's usually just something t uh, fleeting or temporary, you know. That's all I have, dear God. Thank you for giving us your word. Thank you for allowing us to see what it says. Bless the listeners. I ask all this in Jesus' name. Amen.